We're on the runway. Okay? Hey, we are on the runway. Know that, my friends. I mean, guys, make 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 absolutely no mistake about that. When you're looking about how things are looking now for how, again, the National Football League is right here, and you know without a doubt that you're looking at a position right now where, hey, man, we're right around the corner. We're absolutely right around the corner. We appreciate everybody coming aboard with us here each and every single day. Thank you so much again, folks, for coming aboard. Um, without a doubt, I'm so looking forward to the upcoming NFL season. Make no mistake about it. We are going to be one of the most interesting teams, I would say, the Philadelphia Eagles when it comes to um, this upcoming season. Let's see, hopefully we can get our show up on Twitter here because uh, yesterday we had over a thousand folks on Twitter yesterday. So hopefully we can get that up and running over on Twitter there. There we go. I think we just I think we just had it there. No, that was yesterday's show. So see if we can get that up on Twitter here because uh, we, ha we had over a thousand people yesterday. So, Joe, just let me know when that thing is popped up there on Twitter. Um. I believe we're going now. We are live now, right now on Twitter. So fantastic. We are, without a doubt, appreciate that very much, you guys jumping aboard. Yesterday, we had like over a grand, like 1,200 people uh, came aboard with us on all of our platforms. And we invite you to jump aboard all of our platforms when it comes to um, Facebook, Twitter, or obviously our YouTube channel. Big Seals, did you take notes this morning on Johnny Mac? No, I didn't know what he said. What did he say, Perez? You can uh, hook me up. Hey, hey, Mr. Perez, I've been doing this for 40 years. Okay? I don't need to take notes from anybody. Okay? New York Giants Hard Knocks Episode 2 was crazy. Mr. Perez, I saw that. By the way, so let me get this right. Joe Shonen the general manager of the New York Giants, the way he handled himself and the way he was talking about making a trade for a quarterback, did you think that was in the best interest of the New York Giants to have that publicly out there that you were in serious conversation about making a move to have a quarterback join the team in the first round? Have you given up already on Daniel Jones? I, you just gave the guy $42 million annually a year. He has to be the biggest cluster bomb in the National Football League as a GM right now. No wonder Barkley didn't go and want to go back there. Why would Saquon Barkley want to play for that? Joe Schoen is on tape trying to cut a deal with New England to draft the quarterback. You've obviously, before the season even started, you've obviously given up on the guy. And then you turn around and you know that this is being taped so that Daniel Jones sees this. What's the end game for that? If you're an organization and you're going to make internal moves, quarterback, coach, host in my business, what have you, do you think you publicly go out, get on tape and go, hey, how'd you like to come work for me 2 to 6 Eastern on Jacob Sports? And then you put that out there and I see it and I'm like, what's going on here? That's what the New York Giants did. That is the definition of dysfunctional, not knowing what you're doing as a GM. I'll tell you something about Howie Roseman. He was able to be tutored by Joe Banner. And he learned a lot of what he knows because of Andy Reid. Let's be candid here, man. Bottom line here, Every single thing that the Eagles operate under right now, 
are things that the Andy Reid regime and the Andy Reid era put in place. And everybody that's a benefactor today is a benefactor of what those guys did back in the day in setting the culture. Vermeil has been your best coach since 1970. Then, from 2000 up, or 99, Andy Reid. Every single one of your coaches have had a winning record since Jeffrey Lurie's owned a team. A testament to them. It's truly a testament. But everybody today, including Howie Roseman, has been a benefactor of the culture and how they do business. I'm not a fan of every single thing you, you do. And you know that. And you know that. However, the New York Giants, you want to know why the New York Giants are a train wreck right now? Watch their GM operate. You know, you kind of got a little bit of a sense when they allowed Barkley just to walk out the building. They didn't pick the fifth-year option up on Jones. You signed that Waller guy. Then you turn around and you're thinking to yourself, then he starts blaming the fact that, hey, Patrick Mahomes couldn't play behind that old line. He takes shots at Dave Gettleman. Dude, you're no better. You are absolutely no better. Reed didn't value wide receivers, JM says. He got the five NFC championship games not valuing. And by the way, for the record, he doesn't value them in Kansas City. Doesn't seem to be hurting them there, does it? To your point, JM, you think he values wide receivers right now in Kansas City? You didn't have one of them go over a grand last year. And you had a guy who was a prolific 4,500 pass yards per season guy. He don't value them. He never has. Doesn't that tell you something of the things that I've been telling you? Andy doesn't value them. And he's been to 10 conference titles. You've won one Super Bowl. And by the way, for the record, you had kind of okay with Alshon Jeffries and some of those other dudes in 17. They weren't prolific. But you value them now for sure. We're going to get into a topic of that, by the way. Please hit the like button. We appreciate it. Mark Dave Gettleman was absolutely a disaster. Absolutely. There's no question. Everybody in New York kept crying about um, Tom Coughlin and Jerry Reese. Well, shit. The organization has sucked since then. Joe Krause is behind the scene now. He and I grew up the Giants. It's not Wellington Mares Giants. My uncle is part of that legacy of that thing, Robustelli. And when you look at the New York Giants today, you're like, that's not Wellington Mares Giants. I don't know what they're doing. John Mara is Jeannie Buss of today. She's Jeannie Buss. Dude. But still, they've won two Super Bowls. Yeah, Tom Coughlin. Tom Coughlin is everything the coach that Parcells was. Better win percentage. Did as many Super Bowl wins. I mean, what has Parcells done? And what did Parcells do? Parcells benefited a lot from Ray Perkins. Parcells didn't draft LT. Parcells didn't draft Phil Sims. He didn't draft those players. Ray Perkins drafted him. Who do you think hired Belichick? Wasn't Parcells. It was Ray Perkins. There was a culture that was set that Ray went, that he took from Alabama under Bear Bryant and went up there to New York and changed the culture around, put him into playoffs for the first time since 64. There's something to be said about that. Look at Pittsburgh. I keep bringing up the greatest stat in pro sports when it comes to front offices. You know what that is? They've had three coaches since Neil Armstrong was on the moon. Three. Three. Okay? Three. That's stability. That's believing in your process, manipulating and moving around what you do. All right. Enough with that. That that is not help. Hey, do you know how watching President Biden do press conferences and debates and such? 
I don't know why you put him out there like that. I have no idea why you're putting Joe Schoen in front of a camera right now because that's not helping him. Hey, that's not helping the New York Giants right now. That's that's not helping him. <laughs> All right. I've got to say this before we get on to our topics. Got a couple legal topics here. Got a bunch of NFL stuff. Don't forget Jason Cole will join us at 4.30 today. We'll talk to him and go around the National Football League. 12 days out from the start of training camp. Six days. How about this one here too, dude? Six days until the Jets have training camp. <laughs> oh, way to go. Wait a minute here. I'm so worried about getting it, th the thing on Twitter. I forgot the most important thing. And Joe Krause reminds me. It's the signature part of this program. And I do apologize. Bet sales. Holy cow, man. Way to go, Joe. I'm having a Biden moment here. Excuse me. <laughs> hey, I'm having a Biden moment. All right. I'm starting not to like Shador Sanders. The Colorado quarterback that Deion Sanders brought up, his son, to the Colorado program. So yesterday, I'm watching a guy roll around with his Rolex at a Big 12 media day. I'm watching him show that he drives around a Rolls Royce. Really great for the kid. That, that's not my problem. Then he goes around and tells people, I know this, man. We're everybody's Super Bowl. I said this. You won four games last year, son. How are you everybody's Super Bowl? That was awful nice of you that you would allow eight other teams to beat the shit out of you. And Vegas has yet five and a half this year. How are you everybody's Super Bowl? I'm starting to dislike this kid. Do you think that will affect his draft status? Absolutely. Nobody wants to sign a dick. Okay? Hey, you know when you can become eccentric? When you're Aaron Rodgers and you won a couple MVPs in a Super Bowl. That's when you can be a jackass. But when you're in college still and you haven't won anything, and last year your team won four games, and one of the reasons that you didn't want to throw the ball away and you took so many sacks was because you didn't want to have an incompletion percentage because you know you get paid on stats. Jadora Sanders is the prime example of understanding you get paid on numbers. He could have threw the ball away so many more times. You know why he didn't? He didn't want to have a poor incompletion percentage. He, he, he didn't want to have that. That's why those numbers are not as good as you think they are. I think he's Jamarcus Russell. And personally, I think there's a character issue with him. I would never draft that guy. I have no interest in drafting Shador Sanders. I think he's got a character problem. And I think it's – I'm not here to tell somebody how to parent their kid. That's not my job. There's no book on it. But I'm telling you this, as a coach – not me, man. I wouldn't sign that kid at all. Absolutely, his dad is failing him. Dude, don't worry about that shit. Success will bring the rewards. You're looking for the rewards before you get to success. That's when you become a failure. I mean, I, have, I don't see anything positive with that guy. Is he talented? Dude, being a talented quarterback in the NFL is not enough. That's Jeff George. That's Baker Mayfield. That's Josh Rosen. That's Brandon Whedon. I mean, go down the list. Tim Couch. You, you can get to the league with talent, but that's not enough to play the position in that league. That's just not enough. I mean, this kid's making me not like him. He's an unlikable guy. We're everybody's Super Bowl. You say that when you're Patrick Mahomes or a Georgia quarterback or, or, or a guy who's, who's won a shitload of football games. Four games. Dude, you know what I look what I if I played against Shador Sanders with my Miami teams, you know what I would be looking at him as? It's a TV game, it's an exposure game for me. And I'm going to do everything I can to take that kid out. Because I'll get my name in the headlines. We'll beat him by 40. 
be a nice little roadkill game. They're roadkill. That's a roadkill team. He's roadkill. Absolutely. I love the kid Cam Ward at the University of Miami right now. Okay? He got on his ass. That's right. Thank you very much, Disciple. He got on his ass because he went down to Miami, started loafing, didn't want to put the work in. And you know what his excuse was? Hey, the humidity down here is a little bit too hot. The humidity is a little bit too hot. And you're making $4 million in nil. And you're driving a rolls around telling everybody you're the Super Bowl for everybody else. You're the laughing stock of everybody else. Deion Sanders blocked me. Guy I've known for 40 years. But you know why? I found out I'm not just the only one. He's blocked people who are being critical of his program. He's blocking people who are critical of his program. Reminds me of Bob Lang. I mean, anybody critical, these guys melt and get butt hurt. Deion Sanders. I don't want to hear it anymore. What? Win? At the press conference, too, Deion's going like this. Well, every win's not the same. Yeah, it is. Coaches are gauged on wins and losses. Why are you somebody special? Because you're a pro football Hall of Famer? I, I've never seen a coach diminish his value more when he had to actually pay the rent. Dion rents do. Hey, get this. But one last thing on this. It, 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 it razzed me because when I saw it, it bugged me on how you. Why am I so hard on him? Kid, don't let an opportunity slip through your fingers like I did. Go work hard for it. Say the right things. Lie if you have to. But don't do this. I mean, you're ruining an opportunity for yourself. You're not helping yourself. Hey, Sales, do you think the Phillies go wider, go wire to wire like the Eagles did in 22, but actually finish? And do what the Sixers came out and do the East with new additions. 34, it's always going to come down to one thing with the Philadelphia Phillies. It's not going to come down to your bats. Your baseball team, the face of your baseball team is Kyle Schwarber. It's not really Bryce Harper. You're either giving Sylvan ears up in games to the fans or you're striking out. And it's going to come down to bullpen. Bullpen and defense. And if your bullpen holds up, that's what won you the series under with, with, with Charlie. Was your bullpen and your starting guys. In the postseason, this comes down to starting pitching. And it comes down mostly to your bullpen and your closer. What is the one person, one person that the New York Yankees haven't been able to replace? Is it Jeter? No. Aaron Judge is doing a fine job of that as the face of the Yankees, who's the one player they haven't replaced? And was the power balance in baseball, especially in the American League? It was Mariano Rivera. Mariano Rivera is arguably the most important Yankee since 1964. They haven't been able to replace him. He is literally unreplaceable. He's won more games. You remember more about Rivera's failures than you do all the tremendous successes he had. Red Sox, Diamondbacks. What about the tons of wins? The five championships. The numerous great moments. Jeter's a great player. DiMaggio, replaced. Mantle, replaced. Um, Yogi replaced Reggie replaced Winfield replaced even Munson comes down to Rivera pitching is why the Astros have dominated completely and where they got that mentality from remember the former general manager of the Astros used to be from the St. Louis Cardinal organization okay and they believed in starting pitching and defense. That's why St. Louis was always great during my lifetime, because of pitching. Sills, Phillies 
winning the World Series, I think they have a great opportunity because I'll tell you this, I don't believe in the Dodger. Listen, I love Andrew Friedman. Andrew Friedman is a dear friend of mine. I covered the uh, Rays back in the day when he was a general manager there, and I talked to him consistently. He does a great job with that checkbook. It's an unlimited checkbook now that he has with the Dodgers. But I'll tell you one thing about, and I'll always say this to you, Clayton Kershaw, or let me say this, who is the guy from the Giants that they had that won all those great postseason games? Madison Baumgartner, okay? Who would you have if you had to win a game seven? Would you throw Kershaw or would you throw Madison Bumgarner? I don't think that's a debate. It's Madison Bumgarner. This guy has Koufax numbers. Giants won three titles up there. Pitching. Okay, Madison Bumgarner, he's a horse. Clayton Kershaw, great in the regular season. Hey, right. Hey, Clayton Kershaw is like the Dak Prescott. Okay, a pitching. Great numbers regular season. Get him in the postseason. I'll take Madison Bumgarner any day. Shit, give me Glavin. I'll take Tom Glavin. You know Tom Glavin is the last 300-game winner in baseball history? You'll never see another 300-game winner. Guys don't go nine innings. Five and two-thirds, and they're off the mound. Over to the bullpen, and that's it. Game has changed. 250 will be the new benchmark. You'll never see another 300-game winner. History of the sport. Not happening. 250, 238 will be the new number now that you get when it comes to looking at Hall of Famers. Never. Okay? Tim Lynchcomb, he was very good. I was in uh, San Francisco when he was pitching, but Bumgarner was insane great. Dude, he was epic in 14 guard, Madison Bumgarner. I, I'm, I'm a fan of his. Bills need a center fielder. If they get this Lewis, Luis Robert, it's over. Awesome to me, man. Nick, I get it. But I think, again, tighten up that bullpen, man. That's the difference that you had when you beat the Rays in the World Series. I remember covering that series. I did the post-game show for the Rays, and – I think game three was like the coldest game in the history of baseball or something. There was a rain out. Then it was cold. I forget the dynamic of that whole thing. It was like one of the coldest, coldest game threes of all time, that World Series. It's pretty good. By the way, I've always told you this. You want to see Philadelphia sports fans? Go to Tampa. You want to see Flyer fans? I, I, I told one last thing. Dude, I'm, I don't even know where I'm at with this. I'm going to get on my topics here in a minute. The Tampa Bay Lightning, Joe Krause will like this. The Tampa Bay Lightning have a rule that you can't go to their arena and circle the first bottom row with anyone else's gear but Lightning gear. You know why? Because the Flyer fans used to show up down there, and they used to show up to Lightning games, and all you would see is Flyer gear. And you'd, you'd walk in there, and you'd go, is this the Spectrum South? We would get Ed Schneider on back in the day. God rest his soul. What a great dude. I loved him. Ed would come on the show. He goes, yeah, I'm down here too. I'm like, well, let me guess. You're over in Sarasota. He goes, absolutely. You know where I go. And I'm like, yeah. He goes, how about the Flyer fans? I'm like, I can't believe it, man. Dude, tons of Flyer fans. And then over in Clearwater too, when they have like their um, spring training, that place is one of the most packed places. There's two places that sell out games for uh, minor league baseball. The one on Del Mabry, Yankee Stadium, South, and Clearwater where the Phillies play. And finally, when I got a chance to meet Dick Allen, and Dick signed my baseball for me. Joe, you'll love this. When Dick Allen signed my baseball for me, it was over there at Clear Clearwater. I go up to Dick Allen, I go like this. Uh, Wampum, um, he's looking at me, right? Because uh, Terry Francona, who I know because he was at University of Arizona, he goes like this, you want to meet Dick Allen? I go, oh, my God, I want to meet Dick Allen. He and Reggie are my favorite players. He goes, you want to meet him? He goes, here's a baseball. Throws me a baseball, Major League Baseball. Does it say Selig? Yeah, it's got Bud Selig on it there. 
So he goes like this. So I go up. I go up like I'm a kid. I go up like a kid, and I go like this. Hey, Dick, can you sign my baseball, please? Sure, kid. Kid. It's like 40-something. I love Dick Allen. Ugh. Then you guys trade him away to the White Sox. He wins the 73 MVP. Nice move. Anyway, let's move on. Jason Cole will join us at 430. All right. One comment that I'm going to make as we're 12 days out from the start of training camp for the Eagles. Who has the total autonomy in the offense? It's not a major topic here, but just a question. Is it Nick or Kellen? And if you say Kellen, can that dynamic work? Joe's behind the scene here. I'd be like, Joe owns the company. I have say over Joe's company. That ain't happening. <laughs> that ain't happening. It, that ain't happening. Kellen has complete control of Nick's destiny. Can that dynamic work? Yeah, Kyle says we know it's how Howie and him aren't putting the game plan together. Or I'm hoping not. Can that work? That's a good one, Bob. It can work in the short term. They win and Kellum moves on. So, Bob, I never thought of this. So, Bob, it's a one-year thing. Is that what we're saying here? This is a one-year deal because I don't think this can work long-term. Can you really have a guy that's on your coaching staff that the head coach has no say in what you're going to do any given Sunday? Can you do that? And can that work? Hey, look, I'm not asking you. Hey, was Kellen going to be a great offensive coordinator? I'm talking about the dynamic between Kellen and Nick. Have the Eagles put Nick? Now, now, if you're, let's do this. If you're Nick, how should you act to this? Let's look at both sides of it, okay? Let's look at both sides. If you're Nick, don't you go home, have a conversation with your old lady and say this. You know, if I listen to what they say, I'll keep my job. And your wife will go, what if Kellen is not performing well and the offense isn't performing well? Don't you say this? Well, this is what they wanted. Then your wife goes, you're going to pay for that. And then you have to come up with, how do I politically navigate through this? Do you go to Howie? Do you go to the owner? And subtly start to say, because remember something, that organization doesn't like to be challenged. Just ask Doug Peterson. How do you navigate through that? Nick's got to save his gig. He is the, I said this yesterday to you. He is the only coach in the National Football League that doesn't have his own fate in his own hands. He's the only guy. Kyle Shanahan has his own fate. Even Dan Campbell has his own fate. Brad Holmes has made it clear. This is Dan's operation. These are all his assistant coaches. He handpicked these guys. With a little help from Chris Spielman. My Jalen stat line prediction. 27 touchdowns, 11 picks, 3,700 yards, 560 yards rushing. I think these are fair numbers. Is that $50 million, Jameson? Thank you very much. Damn, Jameson. That's what I'm paying for? Whew. That don't seem like I'm getting my money's worth. With that talent, that's what I'm getting? It's one thing to have Lamar Jackson numbers with nobody on it. Like I said, 
Lamar Jackson didn't have a receiver with 900 yards on the field. He didn't have a running back with more than 800 yards. And they won 14 games, and he was the MVP. You've got all that collection of talent. And you're giving me 3,700 yards and 27 touchdowns? I'm not sure that's enough. Is it? I think that's a bad season. I think that's a bad season. Don't you? Seals, if they limp into the playoffs, Nick is gone and Kellen the Vulture gets the bump up. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I think Jalen will struggle at first. And with intercept, you know, I, I I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna, gonna we're gonna get to a topic here in a second on this. Lamar's a better quarterback. It is that simple, Sills. Carmine says that. Carmine, yeah, he is. I didn't realize it until yesterday. He's by far a better quarterback. It's not close. He doesn't have anywhere near the talent that Hurts has, and he does more with it. I mean, the wide res- or the tight end, he missed seven ball games last year. Who was he thrown to? How did he win the MVP last year? I have no idea how that guy won the MVP award. He carried that entire unit. I say 30 touch never happened. He's not going to have 30 touchdowns. He's not, dude, he's never had more than 24 or 23, whatever it is. He's five years in as a pro now, four years as a starter going into. Come on, man. Seals, could there be a possibility Eagles hire Frank Reich as the Eagles head coach next year? No, it would be more as a as a court. Listen, if they make a new head coach, coaching hire, I could see Frank coming in and being a consultant or on the coaching staff. They really like him. But remember something here, okay? Frank's got two years remaining, I think. Two years remaining. He's owed $30 million. Why would I take a job? Just like Bill Belichick. Everyone's like, Belichick didn't get hired. Well, Belichick's got two years of $20 million annually coming from the Patriots. Why would I take a shitty Atlanta job when I don't have complete power and I'm going to sit on the uh, inside the NFL desk making $20 million a year? Why would I do that? I wouldn't. Is there any possibility that Sirianni will finally and grow balls to take his team back knowing He is in a lose-lose situation. He's expendable. Um, Maybe. Maybe. But that'll get him fired. Doug wanted to take the team back. Doug, Doug wanted a team. Remember something. The ownership group and the front office grad power after Chip. That's right, Jack. The media is wrong. They're just taking shots at Belichick. Why would Bill take a job when you're making $20 million annually to take a lesser gig with lesser talent? Why would he do that? He's won eight Super Bowls. I'll go sit on the desk inside the NFL for 30 minutes a, a week. Um, I'll do some broadcasting and collect my money and go play golf. Why in the world would I put myself in a position a failure when I'm getting um, over the next couple of years, 40 million bucks. What's the point? What? He didn't get the Atlanta job. Yeah, because they didn't want to give him complete autonomy over personnel and the hiring of coaches. The Atlanta Falcons wanted to keep some personnel. That's why they hired a lesser coach and Raheem Morris. And I love Raheem. I do. I love Raheem. I got a lot of respect for Raheem Morris. I don't know how – you're right. This could work one year. But I'll tell you what, if you get out like to what Bob Brown says, you get out to a bumpy start, that's going to be tested immediately. There is your first red flag to keep an eye on is the relationship not between Kellen Moore and Jalen. It's between Nick and Kellen. That is the first red flag. See how those two guys are working together. This is a sport of egos. 
Howie has one. The owner has one. Nick has one. To an extent, Jalen has one. A.J. Brown has one. The entire team has it. Nothing wrong with that. If you know how to bottle it up, not act like Shador Sanders, and you know how to handle yourself professionally, it's a good thing. The problem is when you start acting like an ass clown on the sidelines, like Pinocchio Sirianni, and you start watching the guy and you're like, hold up here. Where's Big Dom? Dom, settle that guy down. Imagine that. You have to elevate a guy so he doesn't get thrown off the sidelines to settle your head coach down. That's one other thing that I would tell the guy. Hey, Nick, try to act a little more professional this year. That would go a long way for the unit, too. Perception is a lot of things. If they see your general acting like an ass clown out there, they're pretty much going to act like an ass clown, too. If they see a guy that's stoic on the sidelines and has everything under control and things are calm, that's one of the greatest things I always loved about Tony Dungy. Tony Dungy's been on this program numerous times. And I asked Tony, what was the most important thing that you brought to your team? You know what he said? Never get too high when the highs are high. Never get too low when the lows are low. Your team looks at that. You have an even keel mentality. People are going to look at that as confidence. And they're going to believe in that. And I'm like, that's great. It's great, great advice for young coaches. Don't get crazy when things are going nuts. And don't get crazy when things are going sideways. Act accordingly. Players have emotions. The coaches aren't supposed to. Hey, it's cool to win. It, and it's shitty to lose. I get it. Those are all going to come out. But how do you represent yourself in front of your team also and your coaching staff? You tell your coaching staff on a Tuesday, we have all the people in the building that we need to go forward and win. Then you fired a guy on Friday. That's not confidence when it comes to your team or your coaching staff. That's not comfortable or confident. I know a lot of Eagle fans won't like my prediction, but I'm just being real. Hopefully Jalen puts up numbers when it counts and matters most. I got it. Hey, Jameson, you're looking at the reality of a system being implemented. And get this. You're looking at all, and this is what normal people are looking at, Jameson. People are looking at the great talent that the Eagles have around Jalen Hurts and expecting it to click quicker versus a team that doesn't have. And I'm going to make a point here in a minute and ask you this. By the way, we're going to do the big sales top 25 Eagles today, and I'm going to put them in ranking. We're going to do that here in a second. But because we're but we're going to ask you ask you this. Your point is great. I look at the Philadelphia Eagles, Jamison, and you tell me, and anyone else, I look at the Eagle offense right now. It is a fantasy football league guy's wet dream. Is it not? It is the ultimate dream when it comes to picking, when it comes to having um, fantasy numbers, right? Everywhere, wide receivers, tight ends, running backs, quarterback is dual threat, the offense itself. It's a fantasy football guy's dream. You had a fantasy team last year, right? Because it wasn't a reality team. It was a fantasy team. Put up big numbers. And you had a, hey, great teams don't have one in seven meltdowns. Get this. Baltimore was a great team last year. It fell short. You weren't a great team. You didn't fall short of shit. You were who you were at the end. Besides the, the slide at the regular season, the playoff game was an emphatic example of the year. It validated the year, your playoff game. Did it not? Right? It was a fantasy football team last year. Somebody's going to take Barkley with the number one overall pick, I bet. No way. Over McCaffrey? Okay. So this year, let's do this. 
this is going to be – now, I want to throw this at you guys. This is a question. It's a question. Don't bug out. It's a question. Okay? I want to hear one person say they're not going to bug out when I say this. I want just one person. It's a question. I don't want you to bug out. Okay? All right. Carmine. Do you believe A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith hurt or help in the development of Jalen Hurts? Do you think those two guys help Jalen Hurts' development as a quarterback? You think it helps him? So let me ask you this. You think it's better to have primary targets or a quarterback that can spread the ball around in an offense? Jordan Love got better without Devontae Adams. You've had two years of two receivers with 1,000 yards. Got you nothing. Old school coaching was way better. This is why you have a lot of Hall of Fame players coming from those coaches. McVay is the only young coach I like. Get this. All the big programs right now that went far last year have quarterbacks that don't have two um, thousand yard receivers, thousand yard backs. They got quarterbacks that can spread the ball around. When you have two primary targets, you become predictable. San Francisco spreads the ball around with Brock Purdy. Jordan Love spreads the ball around. Who are the two teams in the NFC that have primary targets? Cowboys and Eagles. You think that helps in his development? Well, then why did everybody on the Eagle team have a good year but your quarterback? You know why? He's throwing the primary targets the defenses can read. Uh, and this is why these big time wide receivers don't deliver Super Bowls. Niners had one wide receiver with a thousand yards. They didn't have two. Tight end didn't even have a thousand. They spread the ball around. They don't have primary targets. Don't you think that's better in the development of a quarterback than having one guy? Kittle, what do you have? 700 yards? 800 yards? Something like that? McCaffrey's a dual threat back, too. 1,000 yards rushing. Real good in receiving. Spreading the ball around to him. They don't have one target. They got McCaffrey, Kittle, Ayuk. They spread it around. Two catches, four yards in Super Bowl. Okay. So you really believe having two primary targets. Get this. Having a primary target in Green Bay didn't help Rodgers with Devontae Adams. Kirk Cousins with a primary target and Justin Jefferson didn't help him. They moved off of Tyree Kill. And now, guess what? Mahomes is a better quarterback. Think about that. Patrick Mahomes is a better quarterback today. Okay? Don't agree with the number of things you say, but thank you. When it is good thing to have only two players to throw to, why have others on the team? Nick always saying the offense goes through two guys. Right. They're primary targets. Get this. Here. Here's the thing. Every single one of these wide receivers, you know Tyreek Hill right now, there's a conversation in Miami that they're talking about trading him to the Steelers. 
every quarterback. Hey, does Lamar Jackson have a primary target? Does Jordan Love? No. Does Stroud? We'll see what. When Nico, we'll see. Burrow can spread the ball around. Those are guys that spread the Andrews missed seven games last year. JM missed seven games. Yeah, but Nico can spread the ball around. He's a much better quarterback than Jalen Hurts. Stop what, dude? When you have target guys that you're relying that you're going to get the ball to, you become predictable. You don't think that this offense is going to be as predictable as ever? When you have two primary guys that they're going to get the ball to? If I'm a D coordinator, you 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 help me out on half the battle. Because your guy's not good enough for progression reading. I already know this. Kellen Moore is being asked to do a lot. One thing he can't do, Goddard? Goddard was bitching at the beginning of the year last year. Oh, that's right. You got a new coordinator. We'll see. We'll see if Jalen can find him. Sills, primary offensive targets give the D uh, a focal point. Spreading the ball around forces the D to cover all parts of the field. Bob, that's the conversation right there. That's harder to defend when I don't know where you're going with the ball. Hey, Bob, let me ask you this because you're you're one of the very smart guys in here. Don't you think that has made the Kansas City Chiefs even more formidable that they don't know who's getting the ball each and every single Sunday versus a guy that they're force feeding every time and going to a T.O. or to a Tyree Kill or someone like that all the time? There's a reason that these wide receivers do not deliver Super Bowls. None of them do. Of the top 10 wideouts, I've made this point to you. Only Tyree Kill, and this is before he signed that Miami deal, has won a Super Bowl. None of them, Jefferson, um, AJ, Adams, Diggs. Cooper Cup didn't get that contract. Um, until after the Super Bowl, and he took a hometown discount. But the point is, don't you think that makes your quarterback better and helps your quarterback more when they don't know where it's going to? If I'm playing the Eagles, I know AJ and Devontae are what what was the uh target total? What was the target total he had? 37% of the targets. Okay, so get this. Obviously, that number on the other side has got to be in the 20. So you're talking about 50% of the plays go through those two guys. How does that make your quarterback better? When I know that you're going 50% of the time, if you have 10 plays, five of them at least are going to those two dudes. I'm not threatened by Goddard. That's why if you notice when Goddard is healthy, Goddard's a force out there because why? The defensive coordinators don't believe they're going anywhere else. And when Goddard's healthy and he's in the game, he's an absolute force. That's why it's critical he's healthy this year, no question. And when you limit the running game that you've limited last year, especially late in the season, now again, will that all change this year? New coordinators should dictate that. I'm assuming that as well. Right? If your quarterback can lift the team up with less talent, wide receivers, obviously, that will help more than a wide receiver. It goes hand in hand. Hey, dude, NC Wells, how did the guy in Baltimore win the MVP award? He didn't have anybody with 900 yards. He had one guy with 800. The next closest guy had 500. He didn't have a back over 820 yards. How did he win the MVP? And they won 14 games and got beat in the AFC title game by Mahomes. 
You talk about making your team better. That's carrying a football team on your back. There's no 2,000-yard receivers in Baltimore. There's none of that. There's none of that. I didn't. Hey, what's his name? People forget Mike Evans. He's really good. Yeah, well, Tom Brady's also really good. And if you remember correctly, who became a force in that team when they won their Super Bowl? Wasn't Mike Evans. It was Leonard Fournette when they were doing the checkdowns and Gronk picked his game up because they were going underneath passes. And let's not forget something. When you talk about Brady, Brady was never a deep thrower. Brady was a check down Charlie guy. That's how he won those seven Super Bowls. Wasn't throwing deep passes. The only year he ever really had was with Moss and they lost. He won with Welker and Edelman and Amendola. And when he got down to Tampa again, no, no risk it, no biscuit, wasn't cutting it. They were seven and five after that Chicago game. Then he changed the offense back around and went to went to playoff Lenny. He went and they compromised. That was something on Arians where Arians, you give him credit for. He went, okay, Tom, this is on you then. Eagle fan, Cosell, he's talking about the, um, I'm assuming the NFL, um, NFL Films guy also said that Barkley isn't a go-get-it type of back. He's a big playback. Okay, Brady was the best at reading defenses. That's plain and simple. Carmine is exactly correct. Nobody in the history of reading defenses is ever in Tom Brady's read. No, nobody. Maybe, maybe Montana. Fill in the blank. Jalen will throw interceptions. Um, I say somewhere between nine and eleven. No, Jalen loves the deep ball and will take risk. He fumbles a lot too. Nine, nine, and nine. Um, he's fumbled in the last three years per season. Philly, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Let me think. Fill in the blank. Here, would this make sense for you? I think he throws a lot of interceptions early. And as the year goes on, he gets better. Because he'll be able to be more antiquated with the offense. And I'll understand more. I don't think you have enough time to put the offense in. I think this ship sailed. There's just not enough time. I think it sailed. You had very limited time in OTAs and minicamp. You're not going to do anything in exhibition football. You have a little bit of training camp, which they don't really believe in. And you're, the next time you're really going to see Jalen play any significant football is September 6th. How are you implementing an offense? Guys in pajamas? Those aren't quality reps. You don't have enough time. You're going to have to use the regular season to get yourself up to speed. You're, you're, you're not, unless you, hey, if they played, the Eagle guys played a game in the, in the preseason, like a half, that, that's going to give you more quality reps. And I'm going to be like this, okay. But you're not. You couldn't, you, you had 17 games last year to get it right, and you couldn't. I say this, he probably has, to answer your question, thank you for the super chat. <laughs> 13 and 15, 13 to 15 interceptions. Somewhere in there. Between 13 and 15 picks. Here, I'll give you <clears throat> I'll give you a little bit more here. I think he'll be better next year if given the opportunity with the same coordinator. Because we'll have another year in the system. That's if they keep the coordinator and the unit. Sills. What really hurts in having a primary target is when the play breaks down, the D knows where the ball is going for 
a jump ball. When Mahomes breaks down, he'll find the last guy on the bench. That is completely about spreading it around. Absolutely true. Hey, hey, Lord Vaughn, you keep saying that Josh Allen and everyone else keeps saying that Josh Allen led the league in interceptions. Josh Allen has a higher win percentage than what Jalen Hurts has. He's won four division titles. And also, in the last three years, he's thrown 100 touchdown passes. I mean, yes, he's a lot like Favre. But you keep dismissing. He also throws for 35 touchdowns and 4,700 yards. And he's got a laser beam for an arm. Nobody outside of some of the massive idiots we have here think that guy is remotely close. Your guy's not even close to Jared Goff. And there's no primary targets. This guy, how many yards did Stefan Diggs have in that Bills game versus the Eagles where he had 502 total yards? Hey, you guys give credit to Jalen Hurts for having a great game against Patrick Mahomes on a loss to, to Mahomes on a loss in the Super Bowl. He had 500 yards in total offense. He had 74 of that. The rest of them were him. Nobody in their right mind thinks that, guys. Dude, you imagine Allen on that Eagle team? They'd go 20 and 0. They go 20 and 0. Josh Allen, the greatest quarterback, never or will ever win a Super Bowl. No, that'd be Dan Marino. Hall of Famer, too, by the way. Um, I'm not even giving Hurts a lot of credit, but damn, your minds change when Sills talked. I mean, wait a minute, two and five. I'm not trying to change anybody's opinion. I'm asking you one possible question here. Let's circle back to the question. Dennis goes, Dan, you're going to force us to stop listening and switch over to tone. Go ahead. Sure, he does a fine job. We all love him here. Krause, um, Xander, we all love him. Go ahead. Have at it. You're not obligated. Always tell everybody, this isn't the military draft. That's like when people tell me, hey, don't, why, why are you posting this on your Twitter? Because it's my Twitter page. This is my show. No one's forcing you to be here and post 17 million times. We invite you. You've built the show up. I, I love talking to some of you. But when you make comments like that, you're not obligated, guy. We're not married. <laughs> Sills, we paid Hertz to replicate getting to the Super Bowl, not throwing for 5,000 yards. Martin, well, then why are you changing them? And by the way, you'd be the only organization that paid for a quarterback to get you to a Super Bowl. They pay people on numbers. The tight end position has delivered more Super Bowls. Gronk, Kelsey should have been paid more than receivers. Correct. That's why it's one, one and disciple. That's why that position is one of the most important positions in the league today because it's mismatches against linebackers and safeties. Okay. Dude, it was one year once had one, two, where he was now. Um, Carmine, remember something about Carson Wentz. He's your all-time single season uh, passing yardage leader and your touchdowns leader. Just remember that. And he didn't have the year he threw for four grand. He didn't have a receiver on the team that had over 500 yards, except for the tight end. That's not a receiver. I think they're changing his INT problems. Let's pick up. How's that? With a lesser center? 
And how? With more passing? Dude, Martin, Brady struggled with pressure in the middle. And you think Hurts is going to pick that up quicker than Brady did? What was the one area where Tom Brady, his entire career, was an issue? You know what that was? Blitz pickup. Internal pressure. Brady got his knee blown on on internal pressure. Gets Kansas City in the opener. I want winners. You want winners, okay? You want winners. Then how come every quarterback outside of Patrick Mahomes that's been paid in the top 10 have a losing record in the postseason, including your guy? You want winners. Everyone gets on Dak Prescott for being two and five. Name me a quarterback outside of Mahomes that's got a winning record in the postseason. And I'll show you winners. Jimmy Garoppolo, Brock Purdy, those guys. Isn't that funny? Brock Purdy and Jimmy Garoppolo have a better postseason record than the highest paid guys in the league, like Trevor Lawrence. Jared Goff, every one of them. What's what are you talking about? You're making it sound like these quarter. There's quarterbacks out there that have winning records in postseason play. They don't. Joe Burrow has. I think Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow has one. Joe Burrow has a winning record. There's one. Joe Burrow and Mahomes. That's it. And then. It's Garoppolo. It's Purdy. It's, it's guys like that. Nobody would ever confuse those guys with the highest paid guys in the league, would you? Jackson put up points on the Niners with his offense. We scored under 17. Lamar Jackson is must-watch television. He, he's must-watch television. Burrow went to the bowl with Chase and Higgins. He went to two straight AFC title games, too. Seals, Nick's not going to help Hurts read blitzes. It's going to be Fangio, and I believe he will improve. Fangio is going to help Jalen Hurts read blitzes? He's got enough to worry about. We're coming up with a pass rush on that side of the ball. Thank you, Sean. I appreciate that. Jalen could have an MVP year if they would run the 22 offense. Amen, Charlie. Isn't that funny, Charlie? That's all I'm asking you to do. That's all I'm asking you to do, and I'll agree with you, Charlie. Charlie, watch this. Yes. You run the 22 offense. With the same personnel you have now, you're unbeatable. You run a 23 offense with a better coordinator, you're completely beatable. Completely beatable. Proved it out last year. Barkley's a, okay. So do you actually think Saquon Barkley is an upgrade? Probably so. But his upgrade is not going to take away the deficiency of losing Jason Kelsey. So it's kind of a wash. You got the same team coming back. What's going to change? Tell him more. Better hope so. Hey, Saquon Barkley doesn't cover the loss of Kelsey. He doesn't. They're the same team. With a different guy play calling. And that's what you're counting on. And this is why I say you're going to be as predictable as you were a year ago. Two primary targets. You get nothing out of wide receiver three. Nothing. Here is where I disagree with Sills. Cam Jurgens is going to be really good, but not Kelsey, obviously. I don't know why you're dis... I mean, I'm agreeing with you. Facts jam. The reason why Hurts started getting hurt. Okay. Well, at the end of the day, that's who he is. I told you at the beginning, three years ago in our conversations about Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts is not 
with a long life shelf. They're trying to extend his life shelf. The problem is he doesn't have the talent for that. Or wait, I'll take that back. He doesn't have the skill set for that. You're trying to create a skill set he doesn't have. Reading defenses. He's a read option guy. Well, read option. Run him. He is completely a read option guy. He's great. By the way, would I make this point to you? Get this. I, I hadn't thought of this. But here, I'll give you this on Jalen. Seals, is he the greatest read option quarterback you've ever seen? Yeah. Then why did they take it away? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Now you're going to make him even more predictable. You know why? Owner likes to throw the ball, right? Those two wide receivers are going to get to but Hey, you're paying you're paying guys fifty million dollars. They're just going to get the majority of your targets. Those two guys, dude. What, like I said, when I'm a coordinator, I already know seventy percent of your offense. I know two guys that are going to get the ball, and now I can't wait to see how you figure out Barkley, because he's not good at check down. So I'm not really thinking he's going to have a lot of catches. So that's going to be taken away. That helps me out for my linebackers not having to stay at home. So he's not going to throw underneath. The tight end will concern me if he's healthy because that will open up the middle of the field and give them an opportunity to spread it around if he can find Goddard. But if you remember right, remember Goddard after the first three games? He started making comments publicly saying, hey, I really love what, you know, kind of we're doing here. but." Um, yeah, I wish I was more involved in the pass game. Now, again, that's the coordinator. New coordinator. We'll see. I want to see the court. See, I think Kellen Moore is going. Why Why is it that Jalen Hurts publicly is commenting more with dissatisfaction with what he's doing? And you got, you know what? This is kind of like the Biden thing. Don't believe what you're hearing. You're hearing the quarterback not really 100% behind what they're doing, but you're not believing what you're hearing. You're not believing it. Why? You think he's lying? You think Jalen is miscommunicating with you? Offense is 95% new. Do you like the new offense? I'll let you know. Those were comments that he made, not me. Those were comments he made. And so when you when you when you're listening to him, we got people in here who are saying that's not what he meant. How do you make that assessment? That's not what he meant. That's not what he meant. How do you, what are you talking about? He's saying it there. He's sitting there at a press conference. He was asked questions even Ruben Franks was like what'd you say so Martin that's a good question Martin so what do you want us to prepare for then sales as fans to pump the brakes listen Martin if you got out to a two and two start so that's what the Chiefs did. <laughs> Get this. Spike just said I made that up. I have the direct quotes. I posted them. He's saying, look at what he's doing. This guy must be a Democrat like you see these guys. When they, when they throw something out, they'll continually tell you something. And then after a while, what they'll do, they'll tell you you didn't hear it. Jalen Hurts was asked a question. Do you like the offense? This is exact quote. And he said, I'll let you know. Then they asked him, what about the new offense? Well, it's 95% new. He's trying to tell you, Spike, that he didn't say that now. Go back and watch it, dude. It's exactly what he said. Here's what I would say. And this is anything for a good coordinator and a good team. 
you're going to get out of the gate slow and it's going to be bumpy. But it's not how you start. It's how you finish like the Chiefs did. They got better as the season got on. You got horribly worse. In my opinion, so what? Just look for what they're doing to try to change up what they did a year ago. And if you see the progress, what was Mahomes saying when they got beat by the Raiders at Arrowhead? Guys will come around. We'll be okay. Just hang in there with them. I've got a lot of faith in them. We're going to make this thing, and it's going to and it's, and it's gonna work. Hey, Spike, I don't care if you don't believe it now. It's there publicly. You can go listen to it again. It's right there on the Eagle website. It's all good. Okay? So I'm very optimistic Jalen can run past Smith, Brown, Barkley, Dallas with the play calling of Moore. I, don't, I, I, I think you're crazy. Seals, you're absolutely right, but the talent at the wide receiver position isn't the issue. It's not. It's the scheme completely and the organization's decisions that hurt the team. And I would add this two ways, and hurts, hurts. That right there in a nutshell, ace, exactamendo, correct. It's not the talent. It's exactly what ace is saying. There's no... Dude, nobody would have an issue with the talent that you have on that team, especially offensively. Absolutely, you'd be an asshole to say that. Well, then what are you doing wrong? How could a team with that kind of talent a year ago have that kind of disaster ending? Coaching decisions organizationally? Yes. Scheme, schematically? That's all self-inflicted stuff. Imagine that. You imploded your football team because you basically didn't know what you were doing with what you had. It's like driving the Titanic into an iceberg. But, but, but again, when I always tell you that, is that, at least in the movie, I know the, the boat goes down. <laughs> I mean, I know the boat goes down. Okay, wait a minute. You just got done saying... Teams with high-paid receivers don't win. Now the talent. Okay, once again, you're not listening, guy. The talent on your football team is not the issue. It's how you're using them. Who gives a shit if you have 2,000-yard receivers? What is that? Why is that a thing? Actually, I think that, look at the two teams. Look at the teams that had two 1,000-yard receivers last year. Um, Seattle. Miami, the Eagles, where'd they go? <laughs> How good were those teams? Who else? Did any of the teams in the NFC title game or AFC title game have two 1,000-yard receivers? Let me think. Well, let me see this here. Hey, you want to hear something crazy? In the AFC championship game, there wasn't a wide receiver on both the Chiefs and the Ravens to have 1,000 yards. There wasn't a running back on both teams that had 1,000 yards. I, I Maybe Pacheco did. Maybe Pacheco did. Maybe he did. How come it did? How come those guys don't have those kind of players on the team? They got to the conference title games. Forty ers No, no, I was talking the AFC title game because that's where the Super Bowl was going to come out of anyway. And maybe San Francisco would have beat. No, wait, Baltimore crushed San Francisco. The Super Bowl was the Super Bowl was the AFC title game. It wasn't the Super Bowl itself. The, the Ravens had crushed the Niners. <laughs> they crushed. Hey, well, JM, Baltimore had Lamar Jackson. He spanked the 49ers. 
Here's Slagger. This is so dopey. I get the idea that you have to have balance to the team, but to say that teams can't win because they paid receivers is silly. Name me one. Come on, Slagger. Name me one. Mike Evans just got his deal. When they won the Super Bowl, he wasn't making top end money. Name me one. Name me one team in the last five years that had a big paid wide receiver that won a Super Bowl. Name me one. At the current contract time. Name me one. Let's see. Rams weren't paying anybody. Cup got paid after. Nope, that's not true. He got paid after the Super Bowl, dude. Let's see, so you had Chiefs, obviously, no. Chiefs, obviously, no. Rams didn't have it. That's the topic, Eagle fan. You think having primary targets helps your quarterback become the better quarterback, right? And someone goes like this, Sills, these guys are so productive. Then why'd you shit why'd you shit the bed in the season then? Can you imagine that? The AFC title game didn't have one wide receiver on the field with both units that had a grand. And I'm not even sure they had a back with a thousand yards between Lamar and Mahomes. The Super Bowl was the AFC title game. Wasn't the Super Bowl. Ravens had already killed them. Hmm. Okay, you think they lost to the Chiefs because they had good receivers? Sorry. Get this. No, Slagger. Once again, fuck bag. That's not what I'm saying. I'm telling you the quarterback knows how to spread the ball around. That's the topic. Try to stay on try to stay on level playing field here. That's the topic. When you have primary receivers, it don't help you. Kansas City Chiefs moved off of one of the greatest deep threats of all time, and Mahomes is better. He's a better quarterback. Oh. How come when I talk facts to you, you guys try to skew them and say, no, that's not true? Well, wait a minute. Lamar's not Patrick Mahomes. He's won two MVP awards, and he's 26 years old. Spreading the ball around is how you win Super Bowls, not going to two guys. That doesn't win it for you. You don't have any place on the planet in the last five years, five years Will you show me where that worked? You, you have nowhere to go. Yours is theory. Mine's fact. The quarterback that, hey, Green Bay's a better offense right now without Devontae Adams. Is that true or false? And he's a young quarterback. Here, let's do this. He's a younger quarterback than Hurts, right? Let me ask you this. Okay, he's a younger quarterback. Is Green Bay better now without Devontae Adams? Seals, why are you lying? That's BS. Jalen needs a coach. Jalen's, here's again, to get a little off topic, Jake, Jalen will never get a coach. He's had five coordinators in four years. Nick, Shane. Brian, um, and now Kellen, excuse me, four and three years starting. He'll never get one. He's had one decent one, good one, in Shane. But Shane had a year and a half. What coach is going to teach him how to read a defense? Carmine, I believe because Brady said, that he learned it and kept learning it and kept learning it and kept learning it and kept learning it every year he was in the league. It was a constant battle to be able to learn how to read defenses. I think you can improve 
but that takes time. It took Brady 25 years to become the quarterback that he was, even in the end. Do, do you understand? The reason that Tom Brady played so long was because why? There wasn't a game that he didn't go into where he hadn't played that game five or six times already. And he knew exactly where to go with the ball, what he was going to do, how he envisioned it, and who he was going to go. There's no question about it. And you know what he also had that a lot of coordinators, Jalen doesn't have it either. Why throw the ball down the field? Punt. Punt. Brady's best friends were his punter and his field goal kicker. Were they not? Brady won his first three Super Bowls on the backs of his punter and field goal kicker, Adam Vinatieri. Why? Because he was learning how to read defenses, and he was patient. Not open deep, check down. Not open deep, tight end pass. Not open deep, flare pass to tight end. Oh, it's two running back. To Shoney Michelle. Michelle. All I could say about Lamar Jackson is good luck trying to stop him. The RPO system is about to go to another level with Derrick Henry in the backfield. Disciple, there is not a chance in hell that that defense that the Eagles have will stop that Baltimore offense. And if Mark Andrews is on the field, there's not a chance they stop him. Who covers Andrews? And who on that team versus one of the worst tackling teams in the league is going to tackle Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry? It wouldn't shock me they have two 1,000-yard two rushers on that team this year. And if Zay Flowers happens to keep progressing into the, being the player and he can find him, that's going to be a frightening thing to watch. Who, what linebacker do you have that's going to cover Derrick Henry? And if you're not covering Henry, who's covering Andrews? Bryce Huff? We're going to show you the difference in talent. <laughs> Keith. Nice, Keith. I like that. That's good, Keith. Okay. I'm still learning his plays, changing coordinators every season. Absolutely. That's That's got to be so awful. Or Jalen Hurts to have to constantly be listening. Hey, and you know, I brought this up with Xander the other day. When you hear um, John McMullen saying this on Burst 365, by the way, I implore you to listen. When he says this, he goes, um, yeah, Jalen's learning new terminology. Why would I make my quarterback learn new terminology? Why don't you make the OC learn it? Why make his job even tougher? Least amount of resistance gives you the best formula for success. Signed Joe Madden. He told me that. That's a Joe Madden specialty. I was like, Joe, how do you connect with your guys in the dugout? And he's like, least amount of resistance gives you the best formula for success. If I'm screaming at a kid, he's never heard from me or he never heard me ever have a conversation with him. I don't know anything about him. It's, it's destructive. But if I come from a place of love and he knows where I'm coming from and I've had a personal relationship with the kid, he's going to he's gonna know it's being constructive. It's all about communicating and being that kind of coach. Okay? If you're just screaming at somebody, that's that's destructive. I, you know, I, and, I, and I know, hey, and I know I've told you guys this numerous times, Jimmy Johnson, Joe Krause would love this one. Jimmy Johnson sit there and go like this. He's on my ass, getting my ass. He's kicking my ass. He's telling me all kinds of shit. Why? You got to get your head fin And I'm going like, why are you on me? Worry when I'm not. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Worry when I'm not. Because when I don't give a shit, you got bigger problems. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. 
I hadn't thought of it that way, especially when you're young. Someone's knee deep in your ass and you're not getting it. And that coach goes like this. Worry when I'm not. Because when I don't give a shit, you've got big problems. You tell your grandpa you'd be working on that lobster boat soon. That was said to me. Shit. Stubbs looks over. Jerome Brown looks over at me. Damn. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> hey, no shit. Coaching is education. Same idea as high school teacher. Absolutely, my friend. Okay. Daniel goes like this. Why so pessimistic? It's not pessimistic. I know how these things work, man. It's going to take. No. Hey, Daniel, telling you that your offense is going to take a little time and you have to pump the brakes and give it a little chance and a little chance to breathe at the beginning of the year. It's more important that how you look at the end of the year, like the Chiefs. That's not pessimistic. Pessimistic what? For the first four games of the year? Are you going to moan and bitch about that? Or are we going to have a whole sample size of 17 ball games? That's not pessimistic. Why don't you try to go through the normal realm of realistic ways of how this is going to play out instead of saying, hey, we're good. We'll be ready to roll September 6th. When, how did you even practice this stuff when the quarterback is still bitching about him not having the right installs yet? You're listening to him talk and you're not believing him. Okay. <clears throat> Realistically, 10 and 7 playoff win. Carmine. Big Car Carmine, are you saying 10 and 7? Here, watch this, Carmine. I say you have a 12 win offense. I say you have a seven win defense. So that's kind of where you are. Is Reddick being a samurai in Japan? Hey, hey, I, hey, Keith. He's, he's now working with Jackie Chan. <laughs> he's going to fight Godzilla soon. He, he's going to fight Godzilla. No, I actually hear the Jets want to work on giving him a little bit more money. Okay. Swift, great question. Sills, do you know what Jerome loved playing for, buddy? I'll give you a – hey, Charlie, stop me if you heard this, okay? You guys brought me in, and you were going to sign me. I had a three-year contract right in front of me. I had just been released by the Bucks. first trip up was because Buddy coached me a little bit when he came down his two years, when he got the first – year and the second year of the Eagles, 86 and 87, he came down to visit me and he coached us. And so the general manager takes me up there. God, I can't remember who it was in uh, 87. And I, I, I hated everything that was going on in Tampa, man. I just, I blew that whole thing up. And Hey, I go like this. <laughs> I, I go, Hey, I go like this and I'm, they work me out. I think Jeff Fisher was the D-line coach. And Jeff goes, yeah, we're going to sign you. I'm like, great. They just played a Monday night. It was a Tuesday, player's day off. And Jerome was waiting for me because we we're going to go get something to eat. And so um, he goes like this. He goes, hey, um, yeah, just I didn't play very well last night, but he got my shit. I'm like. We're walking out, and general manager takes me. Goes, buddy, here's Cilio. Buddy turns and looks at me. He's so pissed off. Yeah, you, you, you see that guy last night? You see his fat ass? You see him lay down against the Giants last night? I didn't say. That. You think I want another one? Another one of you? You around? Get him out of here. The general manager almost shit. He had the papers in his hands. And I'm looking at everyone going. A drum goes like this. So uh, years later, I talked to Buddy. He was. <laughs> but Jerome loved it. Jerome loved playing for him, man. He, he, 
He absolutely, he did. Hey, Charlie, I was this close, man. I was absolutely this close. Hey, Perez, not happening today. Xander's got shit to do today. How you doing? Just big sales, baby. Then we're going to have our friend Jason Cole at 430. Okay? Hey, Perez, says that, what are you talking about? You're losing it. Well, this is usually what normal people do when we're talking and having conversation. And I know that's like probably foreign to you. So I'll speak. How probably you hear me. If I bust can put when yet, yeah, but it, yep, Eagles. I'm sure you understand that. <laughs> It was Harry Gamble. That's it. <laughs> hey, hey, Perez. Hey, got uh, uh, or no? Probably bet. This would be more Perez's. Ooh, I really love Howie. Um, we uh, the folks over at Jacob Sports, um, Big Joe Kraus got me a great Christmas gift. They got Howie Wozman's face on each knee pad. Couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. Then I got a little blanket with Jeffrey Laurie on it. It's got his nice face. It's got a yacht on it, too. It's a wee wumble. <laughs> right? No, <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. No, no, no. no starting. No, I, I didn't say I was starting. I said they were bringing me in. I didn't say it. Wait a minute. Let me take a look at that. Let me see if I have that. Hold on here. Oh, yeah. I'll have to take a look at it. Oh, gee, I've ruined it. Just so we know, the defensive tackles. This was the Pro Bowl list. See? You got a chance to vote for the Pro Bowl. And look at that. Who's on that? Is that big sales down there? Where it says Tampa Bay? Big Sills made a Pro Bowl ballot? How's that possible? How's that possible that Big Sills made a Pro Bowl ballot? How's that possible? How, many, how could that possibly be? <laughs> so who would you have? Ken Clark, Mike Gullick, and Mike Pitts. And get this, Jerome wasn't the starter then. Ken Clark and Mike Pitts were the starters. I think somebody got hurt. Okay. Jerome wasn't the starter. The big sales, where is that? Tampa Bay Bucks. There he is right there. Big sales. Woo! -wee. How you doing? Big sales on a Pro Bowl ballot. A C4, A C24. How many of these you have? Yeah, 10. <laughs> yeah. Hey. If my opinion, hey, Plant, if Jerome Brown doesn't die, I don't think uh, Reggie Lee's Philly. Okay. JM, I didn't say it. I was on a Pro Bowl ballot. What do you want from me? Okay. What do you, what do you want from me? Let's see here. Did MJ perform on the last Cowboys Super Bowl? What do you, MJ who? Did MJ perform on the last Cowboy Super Bowl? Are you talking about Michael Jackson? I don't I don't know. If um I, I, I don't know. So once again, circling back. Sure, it's pretty good. We'll see what happens. We will. This guy here, this guy tries to this guy tries his best to sell us negativity. All his takes are projections. They're not projections. I'm not a fortune teller. You're the ones with predictions. I'm not telling you your coordinators, right? I'm telling you what you are today until you prove it. That's not fortune telling, guy. You're the fortune teller. 
Can you get Lisa Anna? She does sports now. I'm I don't I don't talk like that. You're the ones that telling me Barkley's gonna have this breakout year. I want to see it. Never lived up to the second overall pick in the draft. Does anybody? Well, it's New York. Okay, well, let's find out and validate it. You guys are so afraid of validating anything that that team has to prove that why that meltdown happened. Was it in a was was that meltdown a product of just a moment in the franchise or was it something to come? Because you've had a meltdown before. You won a Super Bowl and three years later, you won four games. You won four games three years later. How'd that happen? Hey, your Super Bowl window was no years in 17. Is that right? Your Super Bowl window was no years. Now that you look back on that 17 team, do you realize that? You had no Super Bowl window. It was just a one-off. You have a window now, I think, but you refuse to make it a window that stays open long. You know why? 27 free agents next year in 25. Notably, a ton of them on defense. All your linebacking core is gone. Not that they're anything to write home about. Both your corners are gone. Your edge rusher is here three years. Oh, Swift. I love to – well, Swift. Playing with Clyde and Reggie and Jerome and Seth. I'd have been I, – you get this. I, I, I took the Cowboys, and they gave me 38000 bucks. You know, 87, you know, that was a nice sign. Wasn't crazy. They gave me almost forty grand, and plus they gave me, like, roster incentives. I was on the roster – in 87, the Cowboys' last four games of the year, not, not the roster, I was on the team, but not active. The last four games, they signed me in November. And um, um, I, got, I got paid that. So, you know, for that whole thing, that whole year, you know, they gave me 120 grand. And I had been paid by the Buccaneers that year. So I made like 200 grand that year in 87. It was a pretty good season. So, then the following year, then I got hurt and sick. Let's see here. Five years later, we will be back at the Super Bowl. Five years later, is Jalen Hurts going to be your starting quarterback? All right. Let's have a little fun here. Since some of you think, and again, I don't think this is a poor comment. Do you? It was a question. Do you think having two primary targets benefits quarterbacks, and especially a quarterback that can't read defenses? Do you think these two guys are helping him? Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown. When he can't read a defense and they're primary targets, so as a coordinator, I know where he's going. That's not his skill set. That's why I tell you about, go back to 22. You go back to 22, it's a whole different conversation here. Hey, William, 200 grand? That's 1987 money. Figure out with inflation what that would be 2024. Sills, who do you draft, Allen or Burrow? Probably Allen. Probably Allen. Who's better in the pocket? Probably Burrow. Got to be in the pocket, though, dude. You can't be um, Joe Namath Burrow. You can't look like Joe Namath. Joe Namath missing games, missing seasons. It's, you got to fix that. He's a really good player. Hey, a healthy Joe Burrow? Taking Joe. Joe Burrow as of today, I would take Allen. He's more reliable. That guy don't miss games because he's six five and a half. That's why. Okay. 
I believe two is better than one. You do? Well, that doesn't – hey, let me ask you this, Daniel. So you think the Miami Dolphins are going to the Super Bowl? They got 2,000-yard receivers two years in a row. You think they're going somewhere? Give me a break. Give me a break. Okay. Burrow's better. Stop it. Burrow's better? How is Burrow better when he misses the games that he's missed? Hey, get this. That's a person that says Burrow's better when he's when he plays four games last year than Josh Allen. How's he better? Sitting on the bench or sitting in a rehab. Wow, how is that better? Availability is part of the evaluation. Bo Jackson is the greatest running back I've ever seen. Talent-wise, I've never seen a running back better than Bo Jackson. Bo Jackson played three years or two years. It's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. Okay? Okay. 22, Blitz didn't get him. Now they need multiple ways to beat the Blitz. Otherwise, Jalen is on his way out next year. Hey, Jalen, the reason why the Blitz was a factor, he was in the pocket more. In 22, he was a read option guy. And once again, we're talking about two different Jalen Hurts here now. Two different, two different. Okay. DFW, Jackson was the most naturally gifted athlete to ever walk this earth. Freaking nature. Unbelievable. And you want to hear something, DFW? We played him in a bowl game, one of the very first kickoff classics. We played Auburn. We held him to 17 yards. I don't know how we – they had nothing on that Auburn team. And we held him to 17 yards. I remember him in the pros. Let me tell you something. I've never seen a guy that fast move that fast. And then I, I played against him my freshman year when I was at Maryland. He gained like 200 yards. And we were fifth in the country then at the time. And we had a pretty good defense. And I never seen anything like it. He is the most gifted player. Look, Dion's a great athlete. Bo's better. Bo's the most gifted athlete I've ever seen. Sills, defenses are going to blitz Hurts again. That's They're going to start the season doing that. Do you really believe Moore is going to figure out a way to stop the blitzes in 2024? Do you know what I would do, senor? Do you know what I would do if I were if I were Kellen Moore? I would put a little bit of Aaron Rodgers in that offense. Why not roll him? Can he can he throw in the run? Can can he can he throw the ball? Rolling? You know what I mean? Sills, how was Bill Goldberg? Did you play against him? Yeah, Bill was at the uh, Sacramento Surge in the World League, and he played defensive tackle. And I was um, with the Orlando Thunder, and we played in the World Bowl up in Montreal. And Bill played a little bit for the Rams, and he played on the Sacramento Surge in the World League. And we became friends, actually up in uh, Montreal. That's how I met him was that he played up at, um, he played in the world league, he came over from the Rams. I was with the lions. The lions had my property rights and he was with the Rams. So yeah, that's how I met Bill Goldberg. Bill wasn't in wrestling yet. He was uh, still trying to figure it out. And um, he, he played for the Sacramento surge. Seals. Who is your top five running backs in the league right now? I'm going to get to my top 25 Eagles here in a second. One, two, three. You said five? Yeah. I would say Christian McCaffrey. Henry,
Josh Jacobs. Joe Mixon. Then probably Barkley. You could argue Kamara, but, you know, he had a freaky year last year. Um, how about this one? Well, then again, I don't think Barkley's better than Bijan Robinson. So I don't know. I don't know. I mean, he's not better than Bijan. Sills wasn't Kevin Green on that Auburn team. He was. Kevin Green was a great player. Yeah. Um, I am Ruiz. So I am Ruiz. You you think that Saquon Barkley is a better back than Bijan Robinson? Let's take a look at that. How many people think the Atlanta Falcons sucked last year? Ruiz goes, no way. Okay. Let's take a look at that. Okay, here's Bijan last year in 2023. Bijan, what's that? I'll take over Saquon. Absolutely, you do. Do you? So on a how many wins did the uh, Falcons have last year? Let's see here. Last year, Bijan Robinson started 16 ball games, played in 17 games, had 976 yards rushing, 214 carries, and four touchdowns. He had almost 60 catches, 58 catches for five for 487 yards and four touchdowns with 1,463 and eight total touchdowns. You think that guy was better than B. John Robinson? Where? He was just on a poor team, the same as Barkley was. And this guy was a rookie. I mean, where, where, do, you, where do you come up with, with? I mean, they both played on shitty teams a year ago. What are you what are you talking about? Robinson blew the guy, blew the guy away. He must have 1,500 yards of total offense. And he had 60 catches. Where is he better? He didn't have a better year last year, and he was on the same crappy ass team. Where in the world do you come up with that? That I'm speaking facts here again. Here's facts again. Where in the world are you coming up with Rob? With, with what's the name was better last year? He was on a poor team. So was B. John Robinson. I can't even tell you who the quarterbacks were. Who was who, who the guy? Desmond Ritter? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Desmond Ritter? Okay. And, and by the way, who would you take to build your team around right now? Barkley or him? I told you this, too. You guys forget. I told you. There was a guy in the sandbox that you take. And you know who it was? He was one of them. Robinson. You took Jalen Carter. I'm okay with that. Bishon Robinson is a great football player. And I told you he was going to be one. I said, that guy's special. Remember I said that? I said, the Eagles should. Remember I was making a play? And I wanted the Eagles to draft him. How would you like to have Robinson on your football team on a rookie deal instead of paying 10 and you could have turned around and gave that money to Xavier McKinney in your secondary? Or you could have gave it to Patrick Quinn at linebacker. Some of that money. I mean, there lies a miss. You you make it sound like Barkley's. You're not building your team around Saquon Barkley. You're building your team around Bijan Robinson. I flat out told you. Can you imagine Bijan Robinson running behind? Wait a minute. Let's do this one. 
the, the, the Eagle D line was trash anyway at the end of the year, Senor. So wait a minute. Let me get this right. Bijan Robinson played in 16 ball games last year. So let's use some. Hey, Bijan Robinson played behind the Atlanta Falcons' absolutely horrible O line. Like Barkley played behind the awful, awful O line in New York. What if Robinson had played behind a year ago? Remember, I told you if that guy plays behind that Philadelphia Eagle O line to lead the NFL in rushing. What do you think he would have ran for if he played behind that Eagle O-line last year? He ran for 976 and only 200 carries in Atlanta. He'd had 1,500 yards. He led the league in rushing. And he had 60 catches. Then again, the quarterback couldn't find him. Desmond Ritter found him. <laughs> Desmond Ritter found him for 500 yards almost. Atlanta won seven games in the NFC South. Woo! <laughs> oh, I forgot. That's right. You got blown out by the champions of the NFC South in the playoffs. Oh, Atlanta has a great old line now. I'm, I bet they do. Bijan had 1463 in total offensive yards last year as a rookie. As a rookie, absolutely true. Guys, open your face. You better come with some receipts here, man. Trouble is, we don't give the running backs enough chances. Well, what are you talking about? The last two years, your guys have averaged 1,200 yards rushing. Um, let's less yards than Barkley's rookie year. The Giants were better back then. Okay, hey, Senor, you're right. You build your team around. No, you're right. Barkley's better than Robinson right now. Guy who had almost 60 catches. Okay, whatever, guy. He's had two knee injuries in the last four years. You're right. We'll see. We are going to do our top 25. Actually, I think I did 20. Twenty-three. Actually, I think I did my top 23 Eagles. So we're going to do that. Um, Sills, do you do you know that the Lions have three first rounders on their old line? Eagles only have one. Yeah. They do a great job of that. Kyle, I'll make this point to you as well. Most of those picks are all because of the Stafford deal. Look at all the deals that they've done. Okay? Look at this. I am Ruiz, a rookie over Barkley. Okay. I'll take the young kid who's got fresher legs than the guy who's an old dude who's had two knee surgeries in four years. Hey, dude, all good. Ruiz. You take the banged up, high treaded running back. I'll take the new guy. No problem. No problem. I, I never said Bijan was better than Carter. I never said that. Absolute bull face lie. I said I'm okay with them taking Carter at nine. I have no problem with that. Carter's a good ball player, but Robinson right now is an offensive weapon. Like I said, he was going to be. And by the way, who proved more last year, Bijan Robinson or Jalen Carter? Bijan Robinson did. He proved that he's effective in the passing game and can run the ball. Jalen Carter ran out of gas. Normal. Robinson didn't. Started 16 games. It was effective. Okay, I, I said that Bijan was better. I, I said he had a better year. Falcons drafted before the Eagles. Eagles had no chance at Bijan. 
they moved up to nine, did they not? They couldn't have moved up one more spot, two more spots. Let me see. Was he picked fifth? I forget. Was he picked fifth? Um, so will you take Robinson over McCaffrey? No. McCaffrey had a, an iconic year last year, was in the MVP voting. Absolutely not. So you take Robinson over McCaffrey? No, I take him over Barkley. He's a better ball player. McCaffrey's a better ball player. Where are you coming up with Barkley is in the same? What You're not comparing Barkley to McCaffrey, are you? This guy early in his career, Bijan was drafted eighth. They could have moved up one more spot. If they wanted him. But I'm okay with Carter. Are you, you get this? Hey, Niner all day. Here's a guy in Carolina that had two years of over a hundred hundred catches and a thousand yards receiving and a thousand yards rushing. Something that guy never did in his career. And you're trying to tell me that you think, dude. I told you yesterday, Dalvin Cook has had a better career than Barkley. Health is going to be the issue. By the way, he's never lived up to the second overall pick. Yes, so you can never have this type of off offensive line. Okay, we'll find out how good he is. I don't believe he plays, but 12 games this year. Just me. No, I just don't. Um, we almost had McCann.